ask you guys how to graph this by using the table. The first thing we need to obviously make sure we have is, one, a graph. And on a graph, since we're talking about a function, we're going to have an f of x-axis and an x-axis. Then we need to make sure we have a table of values. And we're going to create that table of values. All right. Any function equation can be graphed by using a table of values. So if you don't have a calculator and you don't know how to use transformations, please just create a table of values. So in creating our table of values, we can pick any numbers we want to, right? We talked about the domain is from negative infinity to infinity. So you get to pick any number that you want to plug in, right? So what I ask yourself is, you know, why make it harder on yourself um, if you don't have to? So usually what I like to is make sure I include a negative number or negative numbers, and 0. 0 is always good, negative and positive. Those are always the least good ones. And if you need to change, you know, change or alter it, um, we, you can go ahead and do that. So now to determine f of x, all you simply do is you take your x values and you plug them in for x. So here I have negative 2 raised to the negative 2 plus 1 equals 2 to the negative first power. right? Order of operations, you apply inside those parentheses first. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 2 to the negative um, first power is just going to equal a 1 half. Then we do negative 2 raised to the negative first power plus 1. And that equals uh, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Oh, it's a negative 2, isn't it? Which equals 1. Yeah. So now we do 0. Negative 2 to the 0 plus 1 equals negative 2 to the first power, which is just equal to negative 2. And then I'll just kind of speed this up. So negative 2 to the 1 plus 1 equals negative 2 to the second power, which equals, um, now remember, this gets a little confusing. When it's negative 2 to the second power, you have to apply order of operations. So that is 2 squared, then being multiplied by negative 2. Remember we talked about that? Remember, a, a cannot be what? Your base cannot be what? Positive or negative? Can't be negative. negative. This is not a negative base. This is really negative 2 to the x plus 1. 2 is positive. It's just being multiplied by a negative 1. So don't tell me that this answer is 4. It's actually negative 4. And then we do 2, negative 2, to the 2 plus 1 equals negative 8. All right. So a couple things. Let's just kind of go over this on the graph. Um, let's go and just graph these now. So what we do is we look at this, and I say at negative 2. So we'll negative 2, 0, 1, 2. At negative 2, I'm up to 1 half, right? Yes? OK. I'll, I'll go through the graph, and then if you have something else, let me know. OK, at negative 2, we're at 1 half, which is halfway between 0 and 1. At negative 1, we're at 1. So at negative 1, we're down to 1. Yes? OK. At 0, we're down to negative 2. At 1, we're down to negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And at 2, we're down to negative 8. So if I connect these now, that's what our graph looks like. Yes? Oh, yeah, I think I forgot those. Well, yes, sorry, thank you. Yeah, I messed that up. That should, yeah, 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 thank you. I guess I wrote it on there, but uh, yes. That should be a negative 1 half, sorry. I get, didn't write that in there. 
I forgot these are negative. I forgot there was a negative value multiplied by that. Thank you. Yeah, those should be negative 1 half and negative 1. All right. So let's go and take a look at, well, how does this make sense? You said they couldn't be negative, right? Now you have negative values. How does this work? Well, first of all, let's go back and look at our parent function. Our parent function goes like this. Right? And remember, we, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about the transformations, right? The shifting, the left, right, and the up and down. So let's go ahead and talk about transformations again real quick. Here, the plus 1 told you to actually shift it left. Is this graph, if you see here, here's my main first, here's that point, my y-intercept. You can see now my y-intercept has been shifted one to the left, right? So that would be my old y-intercept. Then also, the negative outside of the function tells you to reflect over the x-axis. So what I did was I reflected it, I shifted it left, and then I reflected the graph. Okay, So it's been reflected and shifted over to the left. Now you can determine on this one, since I did not move up and down, since I did not move up and down, my asymptote is still at 0. And then if you want to talk about your domain and range, the domain is still going to be all real numbers. And your range is now, you see, if my asymptote is at 0, my graph is never going to get to a positive number. Because remember, no matter what number I raise to that power, it's always going to be multiplied by a negative answer. That's why we have negative values in this case. And that's why the negative makes sure it's reflected. Because no matter what number I raise to an exponent, it's always going to be multiplied by a negative number. That's why we have our graphs being negative. Okay? You guys can also graph those in your graphing calculator, and you'd get the exact same value. All right?